Hello oh, and Incredibles. welcome to Sorry. the Hugh Hattrick Show. I'm trying not to be interrupted by my guests so far. <laughs> but here we are. It is, of course, Monday night. And we have a fantastic show for you tonight. We've got Simon and the Jizza here. Good evening, Simon. It's good to see you. Good and evening. We've got... Hello there. Hello. And we've got Andy Roo. Roo, it's good to see you. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. I'm going out of focus again. This stupid camera is annoying me again. <laughs> it's like something out of Star Trek. But there you go. And what has been a really, really good weekend of motorsport with a fantastic Italian Grand Prix. And then, of course, um, we've got some great races as well on GT7. Great and job, uh, now boy. we're getting a, a view there of Rue's ceiling, along with, <laughs> along with some other pieces he tries to sort his camera. But it's great to see you. I hope you're en enjoying a, a fantastic week of motorsport. And we've also got some exclusive footage that we have had permission from Simon to use tonight. And I believe Rue is going to bring that to us in a little yeah, while. Yeah, I've got them ready in, in, in little tabs. <clears throat> um, yes. So and Hob and Helen, is here, the Helen is here. I said the Hobbit's here. Helen is here. Helen, it's good to see you. And Ian is here as well. And to all of you in the comments, it's good to see you. And for our I showed you my birthday present. But it's ah, quite large. Ah, it's, no, and uh, we have discovered it is actually signed by Sterling Moss. Wow. It's one of 500. Yeah. Limited run. Yeah. Yeah. Cert certificated on the back and everything. So, yeah, uh, yeah it's actually... So I, I, I was going to introduce you by saying, look, I've got this limited run print of a painting of Monaco. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's it's, Sterling it's, Moss. Moment, it? it's the 1956 yeah. Monaco Grand Prix, won by Sterling Moss. Yeah, so Sterling yeah. Moss front and centre in the painting. Mm -hmm. And he used to say, like, there's a few other people that have said, isn't there, Helen? Who else did we notice said Monaco on something we were watching anyway? It's like, oh, I'm trying to think. Because Murray never said that. They were near the James Hunt. His but... sister, Pat. All right. He used yeah. to do the, the, the Monaco Rally, didn't she? The Monte Carlo yeah, Rally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> she was great. Talking about yeah. how that, 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 that some of the lads used to get a bit upset because we used to well, beat them. <laughs> we've got some breaking news as well. Breaking news for you. I have been in touch with the legend that is John Cleland. And he has agreed, in principle, um, to coming on the show and doing an interview. So it will probably be just a one-to-one -one video. Uh, or a one-to-one -one interview, but um, he is going to hopefully come on in a, a hopefully a week to two weeks' time. Um, we're just getting the date sorted out, but that is a bit of a breakthrough. Um, so we're going to have the double British touring car champion on the show. So we'll definitely need your questions for that. Hopefully, I'll be able to the do a man's live. an animal. Yeah. We crazy <laughs> Scotty. I remember that much about him. He was a bit. Oh yeah, he didn't mess with. Him. He didn't take any any nonsense. <clears throat> was he? Was do you think he was uh, related to Colin McRae? No, it's uh, a. He certainly could drive. He could certainly drive. That, so that's uh, that's the thing. And by the way, just for everyone who listens to our podcast, we had a hundred new listeners from China on Friday there. Um, so welcome to all our Chinese listeners. Um, that uh, I, we must be. We must be. Certainly, we are reaching out across the globe um, with our motorsport and someone, GT. Someone in their their factories for i iPhone likes it, so they've made them all. Yeah. Well, um, they're very welcome. Um, so we've had over 350 listens to our podcast just in the last um, 28 days, um, which is a record for us. So that's fantastic. Thank you very much for everyone who listens to it. So let's get started with this week's topics. Now, should we start with GT7? Because we've got some quite interesting combinations, Shit. don't we? We certainly do. Now, I will leave it to Rue to pronounce it because I always get it wrong. Iger. It's not hard. Iger. Iger. Well, I, but you're not the only oh, one that. Eager. I mean, you, at least you try. It's these ones that call it the the eager Nord Nordwand, and I'm like, oh god, how many? I mean, I, we grew up watching World War Two films, Sophie. I know how to say the V. You know, you just schnell. You just do that, and you're fine. But no, they can't do that. So, so Iger Northland. Iger Nordwand racing circuit. And <clears throat> Please notice when they have <laughs> the very large bus with minis hanging out the back and some gold in it. That's what it looks like. It looks like yeah. that road, doesn't it? It does, actually. Yeah, to be fair. But, yeah. but I, I did try to get the words and sing along while I was doing the uh, time trials that were on it, you know. Uh, 
I uh, know it's it's quite a good combination. I had a very funny race because I went there and I thought, right, let's not have a disaster. And I had a disaster. Um, and I, I had a good start, but quite a lot of people were struggling to get away off the line. And then somebody was really slow and I just backed off to try and go round them. And I lost the back end. It kind of went right round on me. And that was me. I was in the Whee! wall. Um, and so I had to start from the back. But in the end, I finished eighth. Um, so I just kind of tried to make my way back. So you're definitely um, improving. You, you, you're getting to to know the, how the GT7's working now. You're getting better. Yeah, you can't go on the grass with a go kart. You know, um, it just loses all its grip. As I tried, and that so and uh, so you can't cut corners. Really? In that. Uh, Are you related work. to Logan Sargent, by any chance? You know. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah, poor thing. Yeah, that was the end of the end. Of and the night, guy so. that's never been. I mean, how? What's his name? C- Corden Floodenbluden. I An- can't remember his name. Anton- oh, yeah. Uh, Capolino or something. Yeah, something Anton- like that. Anton- Francis Ford Capolino Coppola. It, I, it's a poor fella. Just what a poor fella. I really feel yeah, sorry for him. Yeah, he was, he was trying. He was trying hard. But then he's going. He's now going to be in that second race seat, isn't he? Or, or no, it's Antonelli's going to be in the race seat for, uh, uh, for Mercedes next year. Yes, Antonelli's yeah, replacing... Yeah. Hamburger, yeah. John. So, <laughs> but it was quite a race, though. I mean, even just from the start, the fact that poor old Lando Norris never can keep first place. You get, you get, you know. Actually, Rue, you're doing a very good job of of doing an F1 edit there, because your camera is constantly moving, and <laughs> we oh, never, no, we're board. never getting a steady, a steady. It's amazing. You know? It's so cool. <laughs> Hold on. Let, let me just do. I'm going to do an overtake. You ready? Yep. That's it. Upside down. There you are. You know. I was watching. I was watching the, the highlights, and, the, and it's this fantastic move they made there. I said, I don't know. I just threw up. You know, because all you see is it, and then from another angle, then from another, and then you see him go, driving off, and you're like, yeah, that, oh yeah, that's so good. I'm so glad I saw that overtake. <laughs> I'm going to say, Simon, you used to have what? a camera pointing at the circuit, and you watched what went on. Yeah, like, no, that's not a good idea. What, what now, was, it, is was that? it not in China? What was it? The Chinese Grand Prix or one of the Grand? Oh no, maybe it was the one in Texas. And they had a great camera that went round the first corner, wasn't it? Or maybe was it, it was one of these ones? Malaysia. And it kind of was it Malaysia? Because ah, it could the come Malaysia, round. You the saw them the... coming round the hairpin, and yeah, it was the, great. The it was almost like the camera was on the wall, and and you could see but them they, as they came they, round. They've got these ones where they follow the car like that. But the problem yeah. with that is you get no perspective. Yeah. You don't. You don't drive along looking at cars by doing this. Because yeah. you can't see anything. Yeah. Get, yeah. We need perspective. So the camera must stay still and the cars move. <laughs> it's like it's broken. So don't they look like they're going fast? Not really, because they look like they're still. Uh, Whereas if you went a bit wider so you can see some still things and they went past, yeah. you go, well, that's fast because you can see the difference, yeah. you know? Well, when we once watched it at uh, Hareth. And it was back in I think 2010 or 11, and Michael Schumacher was in the Mercedes at the time. And uh, coming around the first kind of hairpin, um, there was a great bit for spectators. You could actually kind of stand almost right in the middle, quite near. So you saw him come around one side and then come out the other. Um, and it was great because it was probably the slowest part of the circuit. So you could really see them turn the corner, see the helmet, see everything, and then drive off. So it was quite a good way for us as a spectator um, to see just how they, how they drove the car. But Simon, you were at the Classic Grand Prix on the day after me. Um, I was. And, uh, yes. What did, what did you think of that? Did you enjoy your day out? I did, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it was a good day. Um, I saw, I, did it, I wasn't did it rain on you? No, no. Rain on him. A bit chilly, you know, at times, because it's so open now, and obviously being on an old airfield. But mm, Yeah, um, I could get cool. The, the wind at times, it was just trying to find a grandstand that was back to the wind, you know, which was the club <laughs> one. And when I got to club, it, then it was all right. And there's a great view from the club grandstand. You know, you can <clears> see them <throat> all the way when they enter from the hangar straight from into Stowe, all the way around down to Vale in the club, and then all the way up to the end of the start and finish straight. So... That was uh, good. It is a very good. It's one of the sort of premium grandstands, I think, for the F one. Yeah, it is a good view. Yeah, but yeah, very, very enjoyable. Um, it was just a shame there was only a couple of air and center cars running around doing very slow speeds. Um, we'll show them in a second. Yeah, um, yeah. They, I, I noticed it's a shame were... there wasn't a McLaren out there because I've seen the McLaren before, but um, yeah, they didn't seem to be revving that those center cars no. much. It's no. gone like me. 
The It'd Lotus, he shame. gave it a bit of willy, a bit of willy, but the tall yeah. one was, I think, doing about thirty. <clears throat> um, so I was worried about it breaking down. <laughs> well, possibly. Uh, but the, the historic um, F1 series, you know, the Cosworth the, the DFE engines, when they do their race, that, that they really do go for it. You know, they race. Yeah, properly. yeah, the Cosworth. They were that. That was a good race to watch, actually. Mm. Yeah, we enjoyed that. We were up at near Beckett's for that, um, and that was that was great fun to actually to see them come round. But um, but yeah, uh, no. Well, I was you, you you got a close view of the new Escapade, the nice holiday places. Then, if you were near Beckett's, oh, actually, no. All we those buildings. Oh yes, of the new ones. Yes, yeah. They, they were looked pretty empty, mind you. I have to say, they were they were pretty empty. Uh, it didn't look as if anyone, you know. Normally, I would have thought folk would have been in. I the think the actual was... restaurant bar thing was open. I could see lights on in that from. Yeah. Where I was on the inside, but I must admit, whether anyone was staying in any other things, I'm not so sure. Yeah, but it said it was interesting from one hundred and twenty nine pound per night, and I thought, yeah, mm. what are, what is it on a when there's a meeting on, you know, when there's actually racing going? I wonder how much it is then. Yeah, it'll go up quite a bit, I would have thought. Mm. But uh, but no, it, it was well run. I actually had to do a survey. They invited me to take part in a survey um, of the service and classic, and everything went really well. I was doing about ten minutes worth of win. If you, if you if you completed it, you could potentially win tickets for next year's. Uh, uh, weekend um, event um, but then at the end they said we were very committed to sustainability and net zero and the fact that we've got the petrol and, th and they had a petrol diesel band display so you can drive a Tesla or a, Vo or a Volvo and they had a few of these cars and they wanted to know our our, uh, our thoughts uh, like are we interested or not interested and I, I said I wasn't interested and then they asked me why not um, so I gave them a very nice <laughs> kind of spiel <laughs> on how it infuriates more sport fans, even more to be told that their favourite sport is now not going to be there because, well, no petrol and diesel, aren't they? So they're wanting to get rid yeah. of all of that. Um, but I was saying that uh, it's more likely to. I said, don't you know, don't waste your money on sustainability projects. Just do the event normally, please. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, it just cracks me up because I, I mean, I've spent my entire life supporting. What am I doing? Supporting. Oh, this is doing my head in. Back up there. It's like challenge Annika. Yeah, my bum's not that good. Um, <laughs> nor have I got a helicopter. Like <laughs> <laughs> Treasure hunt that one. Um, <laughs> you know, I t trying to clean up the environment and stop crap going into rivers, and you know, yeah, all that, that makes kind of sense. stuff. And, and yeah. you know, when I go to places and I see dragonflies, which is an indicator species to show that it's clean there you know and you're like yeah. that's fantastic that's wonderful and i see a, a bird i've not seen before and all this kind of stuff and then they they make battery powered cars and it's gonna it's gonna save the universe have you seen how they get those yeah, <coughs> elements to make these things out they're of the all ground? At it, they're all at you, it. go to anglesey go to yeah. a place called paris mountain or watch uh fred dibner went there in his in his yeah. last year we had that series uh, when he was he had pancreatic cancer and he, he went around Britain on uh, his, mm. his steam engine. Yeah. And he went yeah. Paris Mountain, it's a bit like you've got the Great Orm by Sandin now, and you've got Paris Mountain and also Cornwall, all these places were international trade places a thousand years ago for tin, yeah. nickel, copper, all this kind of stuff. And it's like one of these Mars scapes. Mm. All the the hideous multicolored pits and that's yeah, that's I mean, how they get things like lithium. Yeah, just, uh, just, yeah. And they, they go, oh, well, it's, it's, it's to save the planet. So, yeah. oh, also, we need to murder every kind of animal that farts yeah. to save the planet. I'm like, <laughs> do you well, the crazy thing is, though, understand it, anything at all? Yeah. At all? It's like, makes no, make it make sense. Well, I, I remember having a, dis a discussion from one of the people from the Stellantis group a couple of years ago, um, you know, that does Fiat and Peugeot and all these lot. And they were trying to put on this whole green thing. Um, and I was saying, do you know that if you actually carry on with this, you'll be bust? That what you think sounds like a great idea and a great, you know, great thing to do. Um, the, the greens are not going to be um, kind of, they're not going to stop at petrol and diesel vans. It's going to continue on because they basically don't want people driving. And if you're making cars from mass manufacture, how do you expect to sell them? If you go along with this, eventually you're going to be, you know, eating your own words. You're going to be thinking, well, we thought we would go along with this because it sounded good. Um, and then you're going to be bust because no one's going to be able to buy your cars. And now they're being penalised massively with all these state taxes whenever they sell a car that's not an EV. 
So it's it's a big problem. A lot of a lot of companies are, are very nearly getting busted. heavier and heavier yeah. and heavier. Cars yeah. are getting less and less efficient when they should be getting more efficient. Yeah. We've got the talent yeah. to make something. I know. With petrol and diesel, what was getting lighter and um, better? You know, but, uh, you look at Harry's garage and he he does calculations of of, of yeah. how long it takes to keep a car. Yeah, yeah. Uh, keep an electric it's, car, say, it's, for, for it to start being of a net benefit compared with his yeah. manufacturer and all that kind of stuff. Whereas if you've got a 50 year old car, all the yeah. manufacturing costs are gone. And yeah. if you could just keep, <clears throat> if you could just keep the efficiency of, of, of an engine, say, or this kind of stuff yeah. and yeah. put development money and technology into technology to make things better and better and better and stop this kind of throwaway society, yeah. you know, yeah, then you'd be. They, they you'd do be it that's really money. helping the environment if you do things like that, isn't it? Yeah. In fact, one of the things I loved—I don't know if you saw it at the classic uh, Grand Prix—but they had a company called Quantum that was there. It made like kit cars. Oh, um, you, you it, near, it was near the, the family area where they had all the the, the fairground and things. Um, and they, but they had these lovely, beautiful um, kind of replicas of like 1950s Aston Martins. Um, and it, it, and so and they would they basically sell you the kit. So you've got the chassis and the interior. They can do all of that for you. And all you need to do is buy a donor car. Like it's based on a Mazda Miata or MX-5 1.8. Uh, but you can put other engines in. Um, and the whole thing you can basically do for about 12 grand. 12 grand and it's there. And I'm I like, wow, what an amazing... Light, you know, I think it'd be fantastic. Um, I think a 1.8 Alfa Romeo engine would be my choice. Full and do some work with the exhaust, you know. Yeah, I think that would be, uh, yeah, be Make, that it, would make be it the two litre, 155 horsepower. The two litre twin spark, fit in, sixteen valve. If you could fit it in, that would that would be something. But uh, I know we've gone a little bit off topic, but it is quite not fun. really. It's still cars, isn't it's it? It's still cars, <laughs> isn't it? It's still, <laughs> it's still all the kind of things that we like. So, at, um, but yeah, now, um, so we were actually talking. We were we are jumping from left to right here. Um, we were talking F one, then we were talking <laughs> GPs, the the Silverstone GP. We were also then talking uh, our the go karts at. Iger, no. Carts, Iger, yes, very good. I got it right. Yeah. You got it right. And uh... <laughs> good lad, I'll send you a present. <laughs> right, Simon, over to you. Now, did you have you done any race B or race C today? I just did race, race A. Like I say, just that was an awful carts. experience. <laughs> um, qualifying where you barely touch the wheel and it turns and it oversteers. And then yeah. in the race, when you go to these hairpins, You've got to turn the wheel all the way around, so it's either some sort of glitch between qualifying, and it's not as like you, you've got a, a fifty kilo weight of fuel in the go yeah, car or anything say like that. It up. So, I mean, <laughs> goodness sake, I don't know what's going on there. What the sudden change was there? Um, yeah. But it was just a shame. I just there was a couple of corners where I did that final kink up into the final hairpin. Oh yeah, you should be able to take a full throttle, and if you just touch it, okay, well that's it, you're chucked round. It's very, you know, very, and then, then I just lost. And I was not racing anyone, so it was all sported, really. But I yeah. was doing uh, time trials, mainly the one at Suzuka and then the one at Monza. Yeah, got some silver time. So someone who doesn't play it very often, I think silver's not too bad. Yeah, yeah, no, that's the thing. Very good. It does take a lot. It, so it, it does take a bit, doesn't it? I mean, if you if you haven't played the game for a while and then you kind of go back to it, or if you're just playing it here and there, it is tough to get the good times because oh, you've God. really got to be into it. I mean, especially this week's one, the Mon uh, the the Lamborghini, which sounds incredible actually, that Lamborghini um, at Monza. But you've got to break oh, so early because oh yeah, yeah. No, bro yeah. no awful breaks. <laughs> oh, it was like it was like something. Min so you breaks. had to break at the angle <laughs> beyond the all, all the... of those cars. The first thing I buy is new brakes and pads. Yeah. yeah. The first guy I used the ghost, and I was like, Oh, no, this is too late. He's braked about way before I did, right? I've gone past him. <laughs> Try that again. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> I managed to get a thing that I think was just under about 2% on that, on the goal. So I was quite chuffed at the end, and I thought there's a bit more. Yes, in I it. did see your times. Um, yeah. But Arkis, Arkis has done again a, a phenomenal oh. time on there. I don't know how he does it. Uh, T has really got the most of it because um, he's about a second quicker than me. Uh, and more and that he's right he's almost at Tisney's time i think he's literally just a, a little bit off Tisney's time well um, on the suzuka one i'm within four seconds of jack holding so i think that's a fairly long lap I'm yeah, happy yeah enough with that you know, yeah, yeah in my old days i used to probably get to within three seconds of him but four yeah seconds is probably another back, level back when you were I, about, I think i'm back, about, back in my day. about two <laughs> seconds behind you i think <laughs> 
I can't. Yeah, I think I got a forty nine. Did I get yes, a forty eight nine or a forty nine one or something? I can't quite yeah. remember, but they're about. I sort of cross on there. I got into the fifty point six. I think I got. Yeah, it's there. A goal time is there, but I'd have to really work out, and I was just getting a bit tired at that point. I thought, no, we have enough today. Ian has said, oh. now I didn't know this actually, that the Lamborghini needs short shifting. And I've been doing the opposite with that. You've been rubbing, I've been it, out rubbing it out. Oh, ah. rubbing it out. You just yeah. like the sound mm. though, don't you? Oh, it does sound fantastic. Which Lambo is it? Is it the Mercilago or the V10? The Huracan? Huracan. I think it's the Mercilago. Is it the Mercilago then? Uh, Ian Ian, 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 which, Ian, which Lambo is it? Is it the V12 or the V10? Because it's not the Aventador. It's not that the one. the V10, the V12, the V12, yeah. So you can rev them, but that's got a lot of grunt. Yeah, yeah, that, but it's good fun. big but engine. To be fair, this is where I think Gran Turismo is at its best. And what I like, you know, the the, the cars like the Ferrari Enzo that you can get, and I, I bought one of them, um, and like the Ferrari Enzo FXX that they have, or the La Ferrari that you can get as well. Those cars are fantastic. I actually do, they, they have a great noise. And you can do some, you know, if you put a lobby together, you can actually have a really good race. And I would you love bought to see them not in real life or on, in the game. Not in real life, no. Oh. In the in the game. I've got sorry. two. As in, <laughs> in my uh, gold plated garage out back. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, but yeah, no, it's it is. But no, in terms of re- I brought them in the game. Um, yeah. It would be nice to be able to buy them in real life. Certainly, of course. Um, ah, yes, the FXX key. Um, but uh, but no, they, that and, sounds uh, nice. I remember when Chris yeah. Harris drove that around. Oh yeah, that was yeah. probably one of the few modern Ferraris where I think, yeah, that that's a good yeah, car. We're liking the sound of that, but you're not allowed, you're not allowed to take them on the road, and you don't yeah. get to take them home either in real life. You yeah. buy the car, yeah, the FXX, and, and you the kind of like they lend it to you. So you want to go, hey, you wanted to go to drive a a Fuxa, and no problem. <laughs> we pick a truck, we take you to there, and then they <laughs> meet you there. They're doing everything to it. You drive it around, then they take it away again. It's like yeah. you've got your own little Ferrari racing team, but you've got to be so rich, and you've also got to be one of their people that they suck up to, haven't you? That you can't. Yeah, well, they, they yeah, get, you've got to invite, you. invite you. Uh, we invite you to give us loads of money, <laughs> and then we don't give you a car, <laughs> we let you borrow it maybe twice. <laughs> I know it is spaghetti, but I bet they give you a really good lunch when you get there. Yeah. Uh, well, they were talking Italians, about if they're not feeding you, they're not Italian. I'm sorry. No. Nope. I grew nope. up with a bunch of Italians. Uh, I was fed a lot by them, and then there was my <laughs> mate Giuseppe, Giuseppe Zagato, from, who, who's a lecturer in Padua University. I can't stand people that say Padua. I want to punch them. It's like just say Padua. Come on. Anyway, but polyphony. It's polyphony. yeah, a phony pony. You know, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and his sister came over, and his, his, his sister they had an Alpha 75 1.8 twin spark. Oh, wow, yeah. for the day. and just because, oh, Andy, uh, you, you, he's very, he's very, imagine Simon, but yeah. with an Italian accent. Literally, it was like, you, you go with my sister. Uh, you like a car. She, she has a nice car. And the <laughs> and the, the husband, you know, the, the brother-in-law, he, they sat me in the front. The uh, sister was with Giuseppe in his Citroen BX11, which I didn't even know existed. You can't get them. You can't get one, them in Britain. One, Smallest engine was the 1.4. Yeah. In goodness. Italy, he got 60 to the, He drove from Italy in it. Goodness. 60 to the gallon. But it's a 1.1. It's a big yeah. car for a 1.1. Oh, even if it's plastic. Yeah. And, and the brother-in-law would, um, <clears throat> every now and again, would just shove it in third and floor it for me because it just sounded so nice. Uh, Down the A55. Great. Oh, oh what amazing. a day. Anyway, yeah. It is. So, Because um, uh, I was watching Tisney's review. Thing. Oh, we're all and like- it had yeah. spaghetti, some herbs, and a lot of peas, and <laughs> it was delicious. Mm. That's the thing. Well, I was watching Tinsley's review. Um, I always watch his race review and his, you know, the new weekly races. Um, and when he got on to Bathurst, which they've done again on race C, um, I think was it last time it may have been a race B, but this time it was race C and it's in group three. And it got me thinking, actually, I mean, because they've, they've done it so many times there. But actually, um, group three at Goodwood would be quite fun as a race, as a, as a, as like a, even as a race C or a race B, because it would be kind of, it would be hectic, wouldn't it? It would be quite manic. 
Um, but I think, you know, because obviously they've got enough um, downforce to be able to get around most of the fast corners without lifting. Um, but uh, I think a Group 3 at Goodwood would actually be quite a quite a fun race. What do you guys think? Just crash into the chicane, obviously. <laughs> but in, in what cars again? In the Group 3 racing cars. So, you know, so because it's, I mean, it's a short track, so it would be kind of hectic. But I think it'd be quite fun. In fact, maybe we should do a lobby with that. Group three should... at Goodwood. Yes. I hate Goodwood. I think that would be hilarious. All those tightening bends and off camber <laughs> things and grass, all that grass. Yeah. You end yeah. up sliding a mile on grass. I'm not going for a picnic. Got... We'd have one racing yeah. softs. Racing softs, of course. They need to have picnics so you can run them over. That would be yeah, quite so... a good. Guns <laughs> and the ability to go <laughs> and have a picnic stuff go. Uh, but Yogi Bear, be you'd have Yogi Bear. Okay, boo boo. Ah, that mean, I'd, I have to say, when, added, you know. when I visited Goodwood uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was great. They're just getting ready for the revival. Ian doesn't and, like the idea either, by the way. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> swiftly moving on. Um, the, but no, I loved Goodwood, even though it was wet when we got there. It was just the, it's all the old adverts, the historic adverts, and the, the, the way that they do everything like the greenery, the hedgerows, it's just beautifully done. And all the tents and marquees, and it's it's. it's I, I, I quite like to go to the revival. I, I'd I like to Goodwood go to the revival and the and the, the the festival of speed and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, yeah, they are great, and I'd still say that the that the festival of speed is probably better than the Silverstone Classic weekend. I think so. I think I think the festival just got a bit more charisma. It's got a bit more because it has it's a bit more. Which is kind of the point, isn't it? Well, I mean, it's, it's an, an event been going it? a lot longer, isn't it? So yeah, really... yeah. But um, I think also when you get the like the Formula One area is quite good there, um, and it's and it's such a mixture. Uh, plus, you've got all the new manufacturers as well, so you can go into their big stands and they, they do an awful lot more. You got Land Rover and Mercedes and Jaguar and Porsche and all these um, great car manufacturers and Alfa Romeo. Um, who I always remember the Alfa Romeo one because people really <laughs> they weren't really following the cars; they were kind of following the staff um, because they had these beautiful. Um, female uh, from uh, females from Ita from Italy, um, who were giving out the brochures and the and and uh, they said, "Ah, oh, yes, you come upstairs and you have some food with us." So, because we had tickets to go up there. Um, no, and, you're ugly. You know, you know <laughs> and it was and they 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 they, they served us hors d'oeuvres and all these kind of things. It was lovely. Um, but um, but no, it was it was just very funny because they were all all these. You could just tell all these kind of um folk who like cars are more like <laughs> they were kind of overwhelmed by the beautiful. Uh, staff. What you're um, saying is really a bunch of nerds. Yes, a bunch and they of were, nerds. They, they were trying to probably to never met a girl in their life. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they uh... what you like? <laughs> it was just, it was hilarious. It was hilarious because we were married. You know, I'm married with kids, so we just do, but we just go up there and eat the food. Um, and then we just but we can watch and have fun. <laughs> the fact um, that seeing everyone else carries one of her special you know? special rolling pins. <laughs> <laughs> for just such an occasion, oh, but it was it was funny, but uh, but they had some great cars like Stelvio Quadrifolios and Chilia Quadrifolios and stuff. It was beautifully done, actually, Alfa Romeo. I do like them, but they're all going permanent electric. Every everything's going to be electrified for Alfa, but I can't see that working for them. I think they're going to be in real trouble uh, if they won't follow last that. Long, I don't think they'll be bust. I mean, because they're so expensive, and even the new Junior that they've launched, which is the first Alfa Romeo to have a front grille and have the have the actual. Um, the number plate on the front, you know, in the centre, because you now the the most of them always have to put them to the side with the Alfa Romeo grill, and um, but the new the new junior electric car um, doesn't have that. So, uh, but it's about thirty five grand. So, it's coming into focus now. There, Rue, that uh, <laughs> I don't know what but, it's been fine for a few weeks, and now it's suddenly doing it again. I found my um, Logitech one did that. Uh, a couple yeah. of times. That's why I went to start to use the one on the laptop, to be fair. Yeah. Oh, by the way, did you enjoy our... We did our interview last week. I must do a shout-out for Tiny Turnip uh, because uh, yeah. that was great fun to do. And yeah. uh, they have a fantastic community and uh, it really was good. It, it, was, it was nice to interview her um, and the amount of questions and comments we got was fantastic. Um, so, yeah, no, it was it was, uh, it was was great fun. Yeah, I'm gonna she, try and it does look like she's got a very good community, doesn't she? So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to try and do one of yeah. I'm going to try and do one of our uh, league nights or the community nights um, when they do the races and things and have to do challenges. It does look like a lot of fun. That, uh, <clears throat> Ian's that, saying that Pagani will never go electric. 
All right, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be... Mm. <laughs> yeah, that would be terrible. If someone like Gordon Murray did something vaguely electric, you can go, yeah, you know this guy's probably thought about it because it's Gordon Murray. Yeah. But isn't it interesting <clears throat> that he's chosen not to? That he has chosen not well, to. Well, his T25 did have an electric version. He called it the T27. So yeah. I don't know why I said T25. But um, that was a very clever car. And he did that. Yeah. It, it was mostly to do to, – that design was mostly to show off the uh, manufacturing technique, eye stream that he invented, yeah. which is oh, also yeah. like co computer-controlled bending of metal, yeah, folding yeah. it and then welding it and all this kind of stuff. So it was all automated, and then you got this incredible three-seater car with a flat you, – you fold the two seats down, and you got this massive flat um, – yeah. Storage so jet, a, a boot ah. area, like an estate, but it's yeah. um, very clever bloke. Yeah, you can yeah, park no, three of them. You know, like in a normal parking bay, you can park yeah. three of them in there, but they park lengthways in the width because they're so yeah. tiny. But it it passes all the crash tests. So clever, yeah. and no oh, one took yeah. it up. I mean, it's yeah. like. I know, it's crazy just now, isn't it? Crazy. Perfect sissy well, car, tiny little thing. Right, I think we should get to some of these videos that you've right. got here, Rude. Okay, okay. Let's so I'm going to do, videos. if I remember, it's control S to share. <laughs> you know it's not. <laughs> Let me just go present. That's We're going to watch, for everyone listening, we're going to be watching the videos screen. here. Right, of... audio is on. Now, the I need Sil to go... The Silverstone Experience. Vindor! This is this one. So this, I thought we'd start oh, with the. That. Thought we'd start with the Senna. Now with this one, everybody, you got to get your. The whole point of this is the sound. I yeah. mean, the pictures there, but yeah. we're doing the sound. So get your good speakers on and turn them up. Are you Here we ready? go. Get I need ready. to press it on there. When I need to press it on there. It's muted. Do you remember need to? Can you hear that? We can't hear that. We can't hear that, Rue. Are you sure that you, you shared it with the sound? I thought, yeah, I thought we'll I did. I thought I did. I'll, a, I will. A brief I will, bit of silence uh, on the podcast. Sharing. I'll do it again. <laughs> Take two. <sighs> I, t I checked. I looked, and I maybe I misinterpreted. <laughs> it. Also, share tab mm -hmm. audio. We'll try it again. Here we go. Yeah, hold on, hold on. To share audio, share a tab or screen instead. Ah, okay, fine. <laughs> <sighs> it's like having Holly from Red Dwarf. There you uh... go. Listen, <laughs> 6,000 is not such a big IQ. That's only 12,000 <laughs> traffic wardens. I know. Right, let's try again. <laughs> Right. right. For it to come up. So, Here we I, go. It, Here it, we go. It, right. It, shitty face. Are you ready? So. Yes. Uh, better? Yes. That one really isn't going very fast no. at all, is it? I've <laughs> been very scared of breaking it, that's all I can think. But yeah, the first one was Senna's <laughs> Lotus Renault Turbo from 85. He won the Portuguese Grand Prix in, and then the second one was the Tolman uh, from 84. Huh. Where the guy's mum's already told him, don't you go making noise yeah. around people. Yeah. The Portugal one, the Lotus was amazing. Because that's, that's an incredible clip when you see him win. Yeah. And that, it's, uh... Right, let's have the next one. Yeah, so the next one's going to be 1990s F1 cars. Do I need to remove this one first, or can I... No, 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 because I've, I've shared the window, so I can just right. move right, the tab along. Right. Are you ready? Right, there we go. They're not really pushing them either. No, but more than what the other uh, yeah. again the thing is with these nice one cars, they all rely on these laptops. Microsoft, or Microsoft Windows and they struggle to find these and so they're so delicate with them. 
Yeah. Um, it's so <clears throat> difficult to run these 90s F1 cars, but that was a... Uh, the first one, I'm not sure, is like a Reynard chassis of some kind. Like, a, yeah. Um, okay. It wasn't a proper F1, but the second one was a Tyrol Ilmore, I think, which was Okio Katayama's from 94, I think, or 95. Okio Katayama. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I remember that name. The ones at the back that used to destroy people as they came past. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Andre. Sinya Nakano, Yukio Katayama, oh. just gods oh. of destruction. Andre de Cesaris, he used to. It caused a few accidents here and there. There was a few of them. I mean, he's, I mean, Pedro Diniz used to pay to drive, and he was better than they were. Yeah. <laughs> well, poor old Henri de Cesaris died a few years ago in a scooter oh, crash. Oh, yeah, yeah, he was, I think he was killed in a scooter crash. But his That's, best season, uh, I always think, was with Jordan in 91, wasn't it? You know, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Never really ever caused, apart from his one big smash at Silverstone. Yeah, Into yeah. the Grand Prix World, apart from that, he, you know, yeah. he nearly won the Belgian Grand Prix. Yeah. Yeah. Did he? Oh. And he was he was catch and center. Yeah. Wow. But right, let's the, get uh, another one. Let's get the next one. So the next one I'm going to pick is historic F1 Cosworth the DFV, the dual the dual four valve. Okay, okay. Which one of my favourite clips of one of my favourite people. This is uh, to, uh, put a comment in there um, to the Simon here about. Uh, you can't compare it with, with Keith Duckworth. Anything that's done by Keith Duckworth is brilliant because it is one of the most fantastic descriptions of how you get power is on the power and the glory. And he goes, well, <laughs> well, what it is, you see, it's the size of the bang times how many bangs you can get a second. So if you can get more bangs, <laughs> you get more power. And I just thought, I love him. <laughs> so <laughs> perfect. I'm going to get all these people trying to sound really clever. And it's just, this is like one of the, the genius uh, engine designers ever with the most successful uh, racing engine ever because it powered so many different cars and got so many different championships. And it's, yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay, so this is... Uh, this is A real engine. Yeah. You know it. Oh, just that wind's falling at now and again. And yet, you can still hear the engines. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of them, isn't there? So I take it there. I mean, I guess they'll be like anything between three and a half, three, three and a half liters, because they did both, didn't they? Yeah. 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 Sort of varying from the early seventies through to the mid eighties, basically. Oh, you got the, the last... idea? Because he, because he was, he was modifying um, Ford. I want to say the Ford Prefect. Is it the Ford Prefect? Oh, I don't know. I have oh, no idea. One. Uh, anyway, sorry, I, 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 I'm so sorry, Simon. I rudely interrupted. Carry on. No, no, you're yeah. right. But um, yeah, I mean, you got McLarens, Lotus is there, Williams, um, Hesketh was there, Tyrrells. Yeah. I think Tyrrell had the last DFV victory with Michele Alboreto. I heard them saying oh, over on the commentary okay. in oh. Dallas or somewhere like that. Um, that was the last oh, wow. one. Yeah. But in that picture. So obviously for people listening, you won't be able to see in that picture. So the grandstand you can see is the Vale grandstand. Now, to the as we look at the picture, to the right of that used to be like a small grandstand for disabled people. And then the one next to that used to be called Club A, where me, me and my mum sat for a couple of mm -hmm. years in the truck. It's all gone now. Yeah. You know, and that, and that was one of the, uh, the best sort of value uh, for a, a seat, you know, 199 quid, and you could still – have a very similar view of seeing them coming out of um, Hangar Straight all the way through Vale and then seeing them go around the last wow. corner to the start and finish straight. Yeah. Um, but that's gone. They got a, and then one appeared up at Luffield. That was a new one which I hadn't seen before. Yeah. So they must have how, how much are they up. now? How much do they cost now? Uh, if that's if 199 was. I, yeah, I heard 350 being quoted as a ch the cheapest. Yeah, yeah. I think, I, think I paid 140. Um, 
it must have been Deutsche Marks in those days, was it? 2001? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Deutsche Marks uh, for the whole weekend at Hockenheim. Mm. Yes. Well, when we went to Belgium in 2013, uh, obviously this was just general admission, but that was cheaper to go there than, than to go to Silverson then. And it was £95, I think, for a ticket. Including the travelling, I bet. Huh? Wow. Yeah, well, yeah, we only, we all, there was three of us. We oh. all had the same vehicle and shared the you know, Euro yeah. time. Oh, expensive. It was £45 when I went to the European Grand Prix in 1993. Yeah, it cost, I think, my mum and dad a tenner to get into qualifying for 92. Wow, that's crazy, isn't it? This shows you 30 years of inflation. That, uh, you know, (laughs) that's quite quite a thing. But, uh, right, let's get on with the next video. Have you got another clip there? They're they're the interesting sort of older sounds, but the, the two I really wanted to play, I want to play, yeah. I'm going to, I think I'll switch to a, a hat trick video and then okay. go back to one final um, assignment. Yes, video. I've been doing a, quite a few shorts, mm. and thanks to everyone who's been watching them. This is the F1, friends, the yeah. F1, where I said, oh, it's going to sound, well, I, when I initially heard it on my phone, I said, uh, what kind of jigsaw are they <laughs> cutting that piece of hardboard in the back of that car with? Uh, when I put proper headphones on and turned it up a bit, it does sound a lot better. So here we go. Yeah, You're it was quite loud. loud. Yeah, it's, but it's not just, I mean, volume. That's, yeah, um, you can turn Taylor Swift up on maximum volume, but that doesn't mean I want to listen to it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it's we've a very... We've just lost our Taylor Swift support. So, um, <laughs> it's a very, um, when I say... It's rush, so... It's, um, okay. <clears throat> it is almost tractor-like. You know, those engines, especially in the early days of the hybrids. Yeah. 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 Very tractor-like. And they, they, they made them a little better, but they're just... Yeah, I hope yeah. the 2026... And I love the six-cylinder engine. I love the sound of a yeah, six-cylinder. Anyway, let's, let's, yeah, should be Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I think so. That was Nicholas saying, is it passed? Is it, has it gone? Is there another one coming? And <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll do it a few times again, and then you get that fartiness at the end. Well. Yeah, it's not like the double diffuser. They used to be so good when they backed off the throttle, and it made that great sound. Oh, no, blown diffuser. You're thinking about the diffuser. blown diffuser. Yeah, yeah, they were incredible. They made that great sound. <laughs> that, uh, sure? Oh, they were so like good. a bag of nails, honestly. Right now, this this is this is this is Simon's one. These are F two cars. They're also a V six turbo, but they're yeah. like a three and a half litre. Yeah, not one point six. So. That is a lot better. A lot better, isn't it? And you can hear them. Whoa! Off into the distance, you know. And they've got an yeah. edge to the note. Yeah. Oh, oh, you don't want to go over that. Well, Wayne. Look at that. It's good to have a bit of time, like saying now for. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. I like motorbike racing, but come on. Yeah, no, that's. But crazy. if you don't know, that's cops. That is just in case for anyone. Okay. Who it's a lot tighter from that angle, isn't it? And the mm. fact that the Formula One cars go through there in the drive just a bit flat out is something else. <laughs> you can see those new escapade um, sort of chalets or whatever you want to call oh, them. Oh, is that what they are? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. They're about yeah. as ugly as the American they, escapade. They thing. certainly are ugly Escalade. buildings. Escalade. <laughs> I'm thinking of the Escalade, aren't I? It's getting worse. Yeah. Maybe it's had inspiration from that. that right, uh, so uh, there you go. That's, there uh, you go. I'll, I'll stop sharing. So do, do you want me to replay any of those? Are you happy with those? Anything else? Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Cool. Okay. I'll stop sharing those and then I'll get back to seeing what people type into us. There we go. Now, Ooh. Ian said I can get to Snetterton seven times for the price of a Formula One ticket, which is true because uh, F1 is now pretty pricey, unless you go to Azerbaijan um, and places like that, which is quite, it's supposed to be quite good value what, for money there. What? I, last time I went to Snetterton, I went to see the Enduro car or the Enduro KAs, whatever you, however you want. Oh yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what basic Ollie was driving in, and he was oh, driving yeah. along with uh, Josh Benson, um, his sim racing partner, for the first time together. And uh, 
I thought, well, I'm going there to go and say hello and everything. I'm not sure if I'll enjoy the racing. Do you know, surprisingly, yeah. I did. Yeah, you know, a good three course race. Time, three hours, it was a three hour race. The time just flew by. And I was sitting there at uh, Nelson Corner after they go underneath the bridge. We got the chicane. It's Nelson Corner. I'm just watching that. And uh, some. You just hear the tire squeals. You hear everything. I have got a short to put up. I haven't put it up yet, but I will do. And um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I do recommend if everyone, if it's anywhere near anyone nearby, to go and watch it. It is quite yeah. Good. Yeah, no, it's it is. It is I, I don't, I've never been to Stenerton. I've been to Ulton Park, um, but uh, but yeah, no, I've never. They do say that Stenerton is quite fun. Well, a lot of drivers don't like it. I can't remember if it was John Cullen who said he didn't like it. One of the people drivers recently said it's he didn't flat. Like it. It's a flat track, but it's actually one of the most one of the longest circuits over the infield bit there. Has Snetterson got uh, a, a quite a, a sharp uh, hairpin at one end? Yeah, of it. turn two, uh, turn. Yeah, yeah. and that yeah. turn under the bridge, like, woo, back the other way. Yeah. Great place to overtake and bash each other out the you, way. And you're, virtually, you're, you're virtually at the A11 there. You know, it's actually about ten yards different. Yeah, <laughs> just so <laughs> the other side of the hedge is the A11. So yeah. um, just need to explain something to to Mr. Kiwi there. Yes, Kiwi uh, has joined us. A very long time ago, there was a thing called the Pink Windmill with um, Ro- uh, is it Roy Hood? Not Roy Hood. Rod Hull with his emu. And and they had a German woman character in it who who said good yeah. armband, and he went yeah, got me armband. So I just like, ever since then I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> Kiwi's done very good times in race in race A and race B. He wishes very good uh, times. It's very annoying. But I just more, I I say I, I may have been quicker this morning, but I'm quite sure that Kiwi has probably set a faster time since my um, race A now. time. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, but yeah, no, no, it, it's uh, it's good, and so is uh, Ian. Ian's has set some very good times as well, um, especially quick, in group quick, in group three. That, that's the um, thing. I always uh, sort of used to judge myself by Ian. I always used to be about a little bit quicker, and I was always the aim. But now I can't get anywhere near him. Yeah. So yeah, you know, but he's on it all the time, and that's what that's what it is. It's practice, and because you're continu- getting old, continuity, so. and uh, you get better. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's it. Well, I think actually we should put together, maybe if not for next week, um, but maybe in the next couple of weeks, we should uh, put together a lobby and stream the lobby. And we could do, we could invite people in um, and uh, and have our own lobby race. I think that would be quite fun. How much time? Discovered pressure washer sim, very, very therapeutic. <laughs> I got that and um, I didn't play it. And then someone I knew was playing it. And I'm like, what is the point of this again? Because you clean things. And it's like, yeah, but. <laughs> It's meant to be a game, right? And they go, yeah, you just clean things. I'm like, <laughs> right, but you know, like you say, you watch them for a while, and it's like, yeah, it, it's, it's, yeah, you just. Oh, yeah, well, some, there's always I a don't game. Know, for I, a thing, uh, there's a game for a time. It's like Red Dead Redemption 2. It's just a great, if you want to just escape, it's a wonderful way to escape into what I, seems I, like something I, historical. Mass Effect, mass Effect, because I can have explosive bullets. And there's nothing that cannot be fixed with, <laughs> with an explosive bullet in a, in a sniper's rifle. Oh, you can have when explosive you... arrows in Red Dead Redemption too. That, that yeah. would, I would, yeah, I'd go for them. You got, you got yeah. incendiary rounds, which when <laughs> they get to a higher level, they call them inferno rounds, and whatever is just kind of like <laughs> turns to ash. It's like. Oh, it's so funny because some people put videos <laughs> up of Red Dead Redemption too. It says why you are not allowed weapons in the camp. And what you do, you um, from outside the camp, you set you with your explosive arrow, go and aim it at someone, walk to a like a checkpoint yeah. to start a mission, and all of a sudden these characters are completely burnt faces and things like that, and <laughs> it looks absolutely diabolical and uh, inhumane. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, and they're walking around with, like no skin on their faces because of what you've done. To them. <laughs> Whoops! But it's, sorry, it's, it's tricked the game into thinking you know that's what you've done, you know. But the mission, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, but yeah. So, Give me a second. He's thinking of streaming it. That uh, it will help people get to sleep. If you, if you do a little bit, I'd love to join you if allowed. Of course, no key. You def- definitely, uh, key would love to have you in someone. one of our lobbies. That would be. I think that's what we should do. Um, because what we can do is we can. I think we can have a party, isn't it? We can have a party, or we can come in through Discord, um, and we can then we can talk that way. I think that would be quite fun. And then we could maybe try some of our lobby ideas, um, and uh, and then invite people in. 
and uh, we could do that on a Monday night. I think that would be quite. Would so you if, be you've got it, if you've got it, if you've got it going through your um, El Gato, yeah, be, yeah, well, I can put it through OBS, and we can stream it out there, so people can see. Otherwise, if you do it, if you stream from the PlayStation, you can't do a party, can you? Is that right? Uh, uh, yeah, you know, if you, no, if it's you, share screen. Share screen. I'm getting yeah. mixed up. Share screen. You can't. Do yeah. It. Yeah. Okay. But you I can do it through more. If you're going to stream Labs or OBS or whatever, you've got to use Discord. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it wouldn't work with anything else. When me well, and we... Jeff Rowe commentated on uh, that charity race for uh, um, a long while ago now, he, he taught me how to do it through Discord, but that was nearly two years ago. I've forgotten how to do it. So, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, oh, there's. There is a thing where you can. It was a bit like, well, you just do this and you just do that, Discord or something. Like, and I, right. I tried to look at it the other day, and I, I, I got lost. So I was just, yeah. whatever. What's a Discord? A Discord is where two notes do not match and harmonise. <laughs> um, we've got one. I haven't actually put the link in the description, um, but if you go on, the, or if you go into this Discord on the internet, it will. You'll be able to download it. You can put it on your phone. Get on to. Uh, Oh, to internet, in. into higher web, and uh, you'll see. And we've got the Hugh Hattrick channel, but there's loads and loads of channels as well. Brilliant or Saturday most... morning technical show I watched called Saturday Superstore, and it had uh, a, a technical explanation of what the internet was. Apparently, your modem, it tells you how long ago this television show was, your modem is uh, a pixie taxi cab firm. And uh, what happens is that they jump in a taxi cab and they race down the lines, gather all the information, race back, and then they literally paste it on the inside of your telly screen. Very clever. Yeah. Um, well, you learn something new every day. Oh, thanks for being <laughs> up. Hey, listen, if I can't explain things to you, who can I explain things to? But we'd love to have Kiwi. In fact, we'd love to have all our viewers in and fill up a lobby. Um, and I think my first race would be GT3 at Goodwood. Um, or go-karts at Brands Hatch. That would be another one. Or or go-karts maybe at Goodwood. A Discord is any sound made by Atomic Kitten. <laughs> You'll have to look up Atomic Kitten. Oh, but, no, uh... don't. No, really. <laughs> I don't want to be re responsible for deaths or, or <laughs> deafness or mental problems from seeing three scousers or whatever the hell they were one of which couldn't sing and the other two couldn't mime or dance <laughs> that was quite funny they were out there it's a don't you think it's funny go. that you, you look back at bands or groups that we used to laugh at because they were so silly like the bangles and you look back right. and i'm going wow they were actually good when you, you you find atomic kitten doing a cover of one of their songs and you're going I don't know what's going on here, but I'm suddenly thinking the Bangles were great. I don't understand, because at least they could actually sing. Yeah, Bangles were quite good. You know, in 20 right. years time, we're not going to go say, oh, Tom yeah. Kitten were great. You know, I don't think they'll be playing. <laughs> no, I, I don't think so anyway. Uh, let's hope not. <laughs> Things are going to be pretty desperate if, they're, if we think they're great. <laughs> what's happened to the rest of them? You know? <laughs> By the way, what's a profi muso? Does that mean that you... Do muses, but in profile, or does it mean you're a professional musician? Musician, because I'm uh, none, none of those things. We should do HTCR yeah. at Goodwood. Yeah, that would be quite fun. Carts actually. in carts. You half of the field is in a cart, half of the field is in a group two car. So you've got it's like it's like In ten laps and the cars get five lap head start and then see if we can catch up. Oh, we could do that. Yeah, I'll just think they're getting the way and <clears throat> make life difficult. Yeah, yeah, I could be in one of those because nobody would notice how slow I am then. Yeah, <laughs> that that that's another thing that lets Gran Turismo down really in terms of the lobbies. It's hard to do yeah. a proper multi class race. There's yes. just not enough spaces there, and. Yeah, and also to sort of set that up in your lobby, it makes it difficult, doesn't it? You know, it could you know, it could say, Oh, what classes do you want? And then when you've chosen one, do you want to choose another class? And then you put that one in there as well. And it it, it easily could make itself up to make that easy, but it doesn't. It makes it awkward. It's not straightforward to do it. Yeah. But their there's there's their lobbies aren't great 
anyway. Are no, they? And that's the not problem. The best thing of them. It just didn't move. For, it seemed to move backwards from Gran Turismo Sport for me in terms of the lobby. Yeah, you could do all this. I mean, I, when we were doing the. Um, What's that word we used to do? Commentaries and stuff. You, yeah. you could plug a keyboard in and there were all these shortcuts and replays and all sorts of stuff you could yeah. do once you learned what yeah. the keys were. Yeah. Uh, none of that. I I, I, and then we, we, we got a GT7. Um, <laughs> the best you could do is fly through the middle of the air and float around. With the, oh, yeah, yes. the camper van. Yeah, they were great. No, do you yeah. not remember Q when there was that one where all the cars suddenly decided they were now levy cars? No, I never. I, 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 I'd heard I'm of them. I'm, 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 glad was, I'm glad it was your split and not mine. <laughs> we came in. I saw Finch. Well, we'll go and see what Rue's up to. You know, no, hang on. Then they only just What's started. Going on, you know, then we go. <laughs> well, it was right. tradition. It's part of the tradition was that uh, we would say we were going to start, and then half an hour later we would finally get it working. Yeah. Yeah, Traditional. Right. It didn't go wrong, but this you just had to. It taught you to have a very, very good attitude towards these things and simply refuse to be stressed and just laugh about it. Like my mother yeah. used to say, You got to laugh, yeah. Andrew. I was just going to say, Kiwi, that's very impressive, actually, to be a, 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 a yeah. trumpet. A and a trumpet player and a recording, and engineer. recording engineer. Classical recording. I used to know when I lived in Germany, I used to go to church with the conductor for the National Theatre in Mannheim. Andrew, who was a very good pianist. I could never remember his surname. I used to know his surname, but he was, his first name was Andrew. And he got ah. me some tickets for free to watch Die Weiße Rosel, which is the White Pony, which is this sort of musical set in a Swiss hotel up a mountain. And it was really funny because they had all these different people doing different German accents, Berliners and all this kind of stuff. And I, I just can't remember a huge amount about what it was about, but it was a good day. Good evening. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, that's Those the thing. The days. Well, I think then that's what we should do. We should try and get um, we should try and get a lobby started, maybe on a Monday night, and uh, see what we can do. Come up with some combinations. You just and then we it's can... just like torturing me, don't you? <laughs> oh, no, no, no you'll, you'll, you'll be great. You're really good. You're getting better all the time. I remember, you know, you were saying you're, you're like two seconds behind you or so, four seconds or something. I used to be really <laughs> pleased if I was six seconds behind him. See, I was like, remember, you took me around Suzuka that time. Yeah. Oh, how's t shirt to do it? <laughs> and I'm 12 seconds behind him. And as, as the time, I'm caught up, I'm six seconds behind. And then he is goes it, faster. And it's like, is oh, it a bit like when Jim Clark took Jackie Oliver around the Nordschleife? He said, oh, I yes. just take you out We aren't doing quite well here, Jackie Oliver. Well, well, you know, yeah. And then the next <laughs> lap, Jim Clark was just gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he showed him one lap. Follow me up through the lines. <laughs> The whole laugh because I'm doing really oh, well. Maybe I'm not it? as quick I'm... as I thought I was. <laughs> catching, it, catching up with him. And I said, we'll do reverse grids just for you, Ru. Oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's exactly what I need. I need... Oh, I've had, one, I've had a so German. Beep, I've, had a... Out the way, you know, I've had a German that. going, Indy, that's his kind park plants, meaning the corner. <laughs> it's, not parking. it's not the parking space. I'm like, no, I'm just trying to get around the corner. Diaco. <laughs> just because I'm not as fast as you. Shut up. Uh, but, uh, but no, it might be quite I'll fun. Have a, I'll have a Scottish nutter going, Oh, Candy, what are you going to slow on there for? Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, Greasy on his always allows the loser to choose the next race and car. Turning ghosting off also results in some hilarious situations. <laughs> oh, yes, of course, because if the ghosting is off, um, it's going to be, you know, yeah, you're going to really thump into people. Um, that would be... <laughs> yeah. Or you can you can join us, or you can commentate, whatever you prefer. Oh but, no, uh, I'm gonna I'm not gonna I'm gonna, gonna have commentate. A go. Get lost. I'll yell yeah. at you all and come and, and have a go. Drive. Come and have a go. I'll have It'll a be go. fun. I'll have a go. It'll, It'll be, be fun. fun. I'll weave at you all as you go past. <laughs> I'll be doing the, the the special David Coulthard wave, which I believe yeah. was at um, Manny Core, wasn't it? Yes, I believe. Uh, yeah. it <laughs> where where he he he, uh, he he waved in Scottish to a German. Explaining who was number one. I've got an interesting the story. The exact words you used afterwards. Women. I was oh. watching on this week's uh, Bearded Explorer on YouTube. Um, he was in Kirpen in Mannheim. And he was actually in the town that Schumacher was born and got married in. But they've abandoned it because some mining company has bought the whole place. And they're, in Mannheim? They're, yeah, well, what it, says, it says it's in the region of Mannheim. It says, it says Kirpen on it. I mean, that, that's where I used to live. Yeah, because I remember you saying that. 
And uh, it was, it's, uh, but yes, but they've uh, they, this company has taken over the whole area. They've bought the whole place, so it's been abandoned. But there's still houses yeah, and garages and churches. Like born. No, I thought Kirpin. he was born in the um, Hurt. Deutschland. Well, his house is no longer there. I'm sure it was, was Kirpin. Kirpin. I was going to say it's near it's near Cologne. It's near Köln. Cologne. It's not near Mannheim. I thought that was Alan Partridge for a minute, coming up with ideas for TV shows in his dictaphone. <laughs> can't stand Alan Partridge. I just never found it funny. Never found it funny? Oh, I love no, it. Well, I did like funny. some of it. I mean, I mean, also, he based it around here in Norwich and the, the you know certain landmarks in the series that I was like, yeah, oh, hang on, yeah. I got... When he goes to Tandy in Norwich and it's... Yeah, I was like, I got my Commodore 64 from there. You know, I was like, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Commodore 64, I used one of those, one of my, like the only friend I had growing up, uh, Martin Dakin, he had one. What a terrible computer they were. <laughs> just so oh, bad. I was watching a video, I started watching a video about uh, Elite, remember the game Elite? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I used started to on the BBC. Yes, yeah, my brother. And this guy that. starting it was talking such nonsense, he obviously wasn't there, you could tell he's a young yeah. fella going... Yes, or everyone had access to a BBC microcomputer in schools in 1984. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I did computer studies in 1983 and 1984. Uh, and for a class of 35 children, we had six computers. Yeah, yeah. But no, hear them. you either had to be somebody that beat other people up or one of the teacher's pets, and I was neither. <laughs> so I actually get on it. Yeah, Elite was so, quite fun, uh, though. That's... Uh... I remember no. the BBC oh, computers. I love. Yeah, that's what the BBC, BBC yeah. model model. We B. had one in. We had one in our primary school. When we started, and when we used to like primary type school. out a story, you could get it. You could get it to primary read. school. Yeah, you about eighty six, eighty seven. Yeah, we had we had a few Church of England, mate. Church of England. Yeah, we only had a few. Yeah, I went to a Catholic school. You see, that's what it was. <laughs> and uh, it could get you to read back what you've written. <laughs> And I, I was talking about um, my uh, experience of reading the BFG, and it would never say the BFG. It always tried to pronounce it the Bafukaga. <laughs> Even if I put a full stop in between each letter, yeah. she would still go Bafukaga. Bafukaga. <laughs> that is quite well, that, I mean, it's, just, it's like I was watching, there's a video, and it shows, I, I'll send it to you, Hugh, so you can turn the sound off. Well, it won't matter for you because you won't be able to pronounce anything anyway. But all all my haunts around Northwest Wales, and only you know near where where my house, my home was for twenty two years. Um, except for it's this bloke from some like Carlisle Uni talking about slate and geography, but it's showing all the places I go. I mean, literally, and that they're they're mm, you know. There's a, a valley, quite a famous valley called Nant Francon. Well, that's the actual the river going through it, Nant Francon. It's the Ogwen Valley, and it's this big U-shaped glacier. Valley. It's a beautiful place, absolutely gorgeous. Five miles from where my house was, we used to go there all the time. And we used to walk up to a, a, a lake called Llyn Idwal. And Llyn Idwal well is surrounded by these cliffs called Devil's Kitchen because it brews nasty weather there. And it's next to a very famous mountain called Trevan. Because F in Welsh is a V, like it is in Deutsch, you know? They're related letters. No. Triffin. I'm going to walk up Triffin now, and I'm like, it's not hard. I mean, it's not like you're trying to pronounce Chinese, all right, or Russian. Uh. It's not hard. And this guy's going, I'm going to walk up Triffin. And he, the way he said Nant Francon, I actually have no idea how he got that sound out of his gob. <laughs> Nord fr Francon. He made it sound like it's French. Nord Francon. It's like someone going to Norfolk and going, I'm going to go to Norwich now. It's like, what the hell is wrong it's with you, you people? It's usually when the Americans come across again. Oh, we're, we're we felt very welcome here in Norwich. 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 <laughs> I mean, I'll I know that's it. That's what happens, just isn't it? Properly. We, we do have some. We, we do have some weird places. Like there's one place called Wyndham, but it's spelt Y Mondham. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like Cut. I stayed at a place called Coston, but of course everybody there called it Coton. Yeah, yeah. Coston's Coton. There's, there's a place Coton. called Boardsville, but it's spelt Board as well. And then yeah. there's uh, Happersburg, but it's actually pronounced Haysborough. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah um, funny, and Palin Janica painted the lighthouse. I don't know if you ever remember that one. <laughs> and Hugh, Hugh's got a good one. Go on, tell him your one. Begins well, with an A. Anik, isn't it? Uh, where I live. Oh. It's and it's it's spelled E L N W I C K. When we came up on holiday there back in 2018, we were like, "So is this Almwick or Anik and the lady?" Yeah. Who's around? Oh no, it's Anik. Anik. Right. Much okay. Easier. Yeah. Much easier well, it's like me. it's like Loughborough. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to show. Yeah. I, um. I'll get I'll get to you in a minute, Mr. Mr. Kiwi. My um, goodness. No, you don't know that. Listen, we were talking about the record breakers last week, and yeah. they. Always had this word on it. Yeah. You know that like used to have the <laughs> bit in the middle, and then they would they would have a bit where the guy went, "Tama waka taki waka taki hoo ha." I can't, I mean, I can't do it, but it's you know, this guy you kind of sing the yeah. whole thing, and it's it means something on the lines of, "I am not going to try and pronounce that," even though <laughs> I used to listen to it a lot in the eighties. It, it means something like a place on a mountain where some god kneels down and has a cup of tea and waves at the passers-by or something like that. I don't know. I mean, I can do some vital pull swing guess. You should try and see if you can pronounce that. See if you can pronounce that, Rue. That. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Do it in the best BBC voice. Tamarako Wataka Tangi Kangi Kawana Manatui Puk Pakapako Manawangi Horanu Kapaka Yawane Kinetiana to who? It sounds like you're talking in tongues there. It's like, it's like, well, it's German where you can make compound words. I thought I was doing the hacker there for a minute. Yeah, that's Well, it's the same language, I would imagine. Yeah. How did we do, Kiwi? How did we do it? <laughs> not bad, says yeah, Simon. Says not bad. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Sam Vital gets Gorgeres when drop off Anticilia Gorgogo. That's easy. But that's yeah. not actually the name of the town, anyway. The name of the town is San Vaya Pulsquinges, the church of the parish of St. Mary, San Vyer. Vyer is Meyer, but you change the first letter. It's a soft mutation. Puls is a pool. Gwyn is white and geth means swirly whirly. So it's the it's the church of the parish of St. Mary near the white swirly whirly whirlpools. And then some bloke built a Pringles shop and <laughs> renamed and named the Pringles shop and the train station it's next to the extra bits, which means so it's What's a the pot you can't stop. What is that yeah. just, not <laughs> Pringles, the Scottish Pringles. Uh, All right. <laughs> The one that has lots That's of tartan, tartan sweaters. <laughs> Once you pop a tartan sweater, you can't stop. That's not quite the same, is it? Kiwi has said that Welsh name sounds like you're having a stroke. That was the one. No, that's later when I get my porn stash out. Now, um, with... <laughs> sorry, that just came. Can out. I can I just say um, that, um, that I've had very good news regarding my Simrig Centre. And the chap that I'm going into business oh, with, yeah, or yeah, yeah. going to be supplying the sim rings to, um, is starting in early October. So we're going to be in a place called Holtz Yard uh, in Newcastle, which is just quite near the centre of town, quite near Biker. Um, so, but we're going to have at least two. What, Biker Grove, Lee? Biker Grove? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, yeah. I'm going to get really excited. Away. So oh, we're going to have at least two rigs in there to start no with. And then maybe more as we go as it as it grows. Um, but that will hopefully be from about the middle of October that I'll be in there. Um, and we're going to be open, I think it's going to be five five days a week or uh, three nights during the week and then a uh, Saturday, Sunday, all day. Um, so it's uh, we're looking forward to that and hopefully we'll try and get some special guests as well um, to good come luck, along. Thank you very it. much. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. I come will try in. and get up there, but it's a long way. It is a long way from Norwich. Because <laughs> I remember, because I tried to get to, now where was it? We were going to Hemsby. We went to Hemsby last year. And the road from that is oh, something else. It gets narrower and narrower until eventually <laughs> you get to Hemsby. That, uh, had a, but yeah, they've but had I'm, a lot of bad times recently with the floods and uh, you know. Ah, they were there were there were houses on the verge of yeah, going into the sand, weren't they? Or going into they, the... they need proper sea defences and they're, they're just not being listened to. Oh, mm -hmm. this is where the yeah. East Coast being carved away by the sea, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's been on, it has been on the national sand. news. Yeah, so. because we've had that in the north. Well, in the northeast, you know, we've obviously quite rusty. Bring me out cold. But it's nowhere near to. as bad as it. Actually, closed all of our coal mines. <laughs> <laughs> I even remember one. Yeah, so we we'll need that to power it up. Uh, but, no, um... <laughs> what, he'll got, what he's got to do is he's got to bring a fishy on a little dishy. Uh. <laughs> when his boat comes in. <laughs> oh, well. Is all mine, all mine. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh God! Do you remember the spitting time. image character of him when, yeah. when, he, when he became the, <laughs> the copper? Brian all the way. No, all coppers are from London, you know. Ah, shut up, Spender. <laughs> Well, we'd love to see you there, that line. If you're able to make it, that would be fantastic. <clears throat> but, um, but yes, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that. He's trying to get me to move up there. Yes. He wants me to go up yet. and do stuff up there. And it's like, I don't want to go back to, no- to the northeast. Besides, <laughs> I might see my brother and want to murder him. <laughs> Surely that's just a crossing. It was a cross up, a crossing up a bit. It's, a, it's, it's, it's about three hours' drive from here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one Europe, way. Uh, yeah, yeah. It is not what yeah. you call Varaclos. Mm. I must admit, when we went up there, obviously we have the eight, the dreaded A seventeen. We do from Kings Inn to Newark, uh, and that's an awful uh, one. And then we got on the A one. It's not too bad, but once you do, it's when you get to Newcastle is when it all seems to snarl up. But I must admit, time it's better now than it was. Yeah, yeah better when, now than it. when we uh, got there, the trouble is our holiday was from a Friday to a Friday. And obviously, yeah. we got to Newcastle probably around lunchtime. And so yeah. it wasn't good, you know. Ah, it's, be busy. So... it's a bit better. They're doing roadworks just now, just around near the bike. But they made a new bypass, but that's a bit better. But it's just as you come into No, Newcastle. I don't believe anyone's doing any roadworks. <laughs> <I'll tell you. laughs> oh, it's the whole place. Are they, are, they, around here. are they doing the bypass for the bypass? Well, it's a new bit. It's it's coming into Team Valley um, and kind of the hill going out towards Durham or the kind of out of Newcastle, south of Newcastle. I wonder why there's all these huge tarmac um, and of, everything out of out of uh, what, what they're doing there. I don't exactly know what they're kind of doing. Now, Kiwi has asked me a very sensible question: um, What wheels are you using on? The I've rig? answered it. I've answered it. Yes, round ones. But the. <laughs> I might go for a fanatic, <laughs> and then it would be like an X one. Um, I think I'm going to. Well, oh, no, the, the, don't, because they're all dead. Oh, they're all busts, aren't they? They're all. Yeah, of... they're all rubbish now, and they're going out of business and all sorts of stuff like that. <laughs> no, we don't do that. I'm thinking about the first master TGT two because that seems to be quite popular. I think that's the one that Tijni's got. Um, he and it seems to be, and it's set up for PlayStation as well as PC. Um, but there are a few. Um, we're going to have to have a good long look. In fact, I would be always be taking recommendations, actually. Um, because and I've got... other makes are available. Exactly. Um, not I'm not going to be using here, a Logitech 923 <laughs> unless they paid me. If they paid me and supplied me with some nice new G923s, I might use them. Who is open, um, who is open to offers? Yeah. It used to be a very simple choice, didn't it? I mean, if you like the Thrustmaster, you got the Thrustmaster. If you like yeah. the G29, you got the G29. G29 um, is good. And then Hugh's got his 923, and if you plug it in, he still doesn't think it's quite as good as the 29. Yeah. Am I right? I would like a set that only has a um, the pedals is just an accelerator and a brake. I don't want a clutch. I want it to be just a really good accelerator. Oh, okay. You don't want to confuse people by yeah. It's easier as well on the setup to get them right, so it's a better better <clears> for you. <throat> you get a more comfortable driving position because um, this we've got to fiddle around quite a lot because we've got the extra pedal. Oh, and, um, and nobody me. really uses a clutch. Really, for the kind of games I and stuff. I do. I know you do. I like my but, uh, <laughs> My Honda S2000 is fantastic. Honda S2000 <laughs> or what's the other one I like to drive around the Nordschleife with a proper proper gearbox? Uh, my R32, my electric blue R32 with approximately 900 horsepower. That's always fun at the Nordschleife. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. use full throttle. <laughs> I'll be getting advice. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be getting advice on the best wheel because I need something that's pretty solid and that can take the abuse of lots of people uh, and using it. Cheap, yeah, and on good value. Oh, I started on it uh, on a GT9, but changed later to the DD Pro as I discovered uh, I wasn't the worst driver on GT7. <laughs> a lot of people have the DD Pro and they do like it. it so that's the thrush. Ma- that's a thrustmaster, is it? The DD Pro? Um, it might be. It's. I mean, it's about, not about a thousand that- pounds. Oh, or, 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 or is it, are we talking about the Logitech GT Pro? Is that because they thing? did a, a GT Pro as well? Yeah, they? that's but, the, uh, the newer one, which is like a then, grand. But I don't think I don't think it's a Logitech. Oh, it's a Fanatec. Fanatec. It's a Fanatec. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. that's. I think, I think the key does key not use the DD Pro. That uh, uh, so yeah, so that's what we're going to be using. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to be using the same rig as oh, what I've got here, nice. which is the Race Sim. Um, it's I really like it. And it's a really nice, solid structure, actually. Um, and uh, yeah, and I'm probably going to go down the PC world overall in terms of, or in terms of the PC rather than PS5, I think, because it's I, a bit more. I'm so. I mean, this is something that's been popping up more and more: how people are ditching the um, consoles and going to PC. Yeah. yeah. Part of the reason for doing that 
I have discovered recently. So my um, PS5 is eight months old, nine months old now. No, no, eight months old. And for the past month, my controller has been getting worse and worse and worse. You know that funny, th- I showed you that video where I was looking sideways when I started driving. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's the controller and it's it's the right hand stick and it's just spinning yeah. the character around and around and around. I've had to actually go to my old PlayStation 4 controller to play Mass Effect because I just really? stand there yeah. spinning around. And so I went online looking at about it, and it's like, oh, yeah, this is common. And yeah. they make it so impossible for you to do a warranty claim. I tried to do a warranty claim. You've got all these tiny numbers on the back of it. I, got yeah. pho- I photographed them, zoomed them in, so I got all the numbers, put everything in, and it got to the bit, go, please tell us your address, and it couldn't find my address. It could <laughs> find three addresses on this road. It yeah. you knew the road. Yeah. 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 Three adre- three numbers on this road. None of them are mine. So then no. he has this thing underneath it going, please get in touch with us. And you're like, okay, so where's, <laughs> where's the please get in touch with us button? Uh, oh, there isn't one. <laughs> uh, there isn't one. It's, it's it like, is, it's, uh, it, this is why one of my favorite books of all time, you know, there's two there's two series Hitchhiker's of books Guide through my Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You've got the Lord of the Rings yeah. Hobbit and you've got the Hitchhiker's Guide. And these two authors... God, yeah. they, they grew me up as a teenager. So yeah. that bit where he goes, oh, yes, I saw the notice. I saw the notice. <laughs> it was in the basement. Well, that's that's the display department. The lights had gone. Hmm. Well, you know, the, 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 it was in the dark. The lights were gone. Yes, yeah, so are the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, see I eventually found it at the bottom of a locked filing cabinet inside a toilet cubicle with a sign on it saying, beware of the leopard. Uh, oh well. And on that a, note, this is exactly what the, the same yeah, thing. That's what it's like. Pretty, pretty yeah, I mean, so they do say the customer Sony. service. Yeah. Yeah, but so I grew up with Sony. I've been using Sony stuff all my yeah. life. I love them. My stereo was a Sony. I, I, they've yeah. always been high quality, and now suddenly they're building crap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you Even know, they're, they're building. The, yeah. The PS5 Pro will be out soon, and Costco, you could get the the PS5 Shit. with the, the slim line. For about four hundred and seventy pounds, well, you, which I thought actually that's not too bad. But it's the controller where... you can you can buy. This video I was watching on it, you can buy a, a, a better quality PlayStation Five controller, which yeah. you can. It's got modular parts which yeah, you can yeah. take out and buy and put back in. But yeah. they cost a ridiculous. Have you seen how much these things cost to replace yeah. the one I've got? We're talking two hundred pounds for the controller. That's crazy, isn't it? Uh, and that's just the same one. Yeah. To get the better one, this sort of pro version of it, it's a hell of a lot more. And it yeah. still breaks. It just lasts a little bit longer and you can fix it easier. What the <laughs> hell? That's I'm crazy. I'm gentle with mine. That's all I can yeah. say. Well, well I haven't on used that it note... that much. You know, I haven't used mm. it that much. You've seen, you do a, a lot more streaming and stuff that, that, than I do. Yeah, much as we saying Smiths do a pad for £60. They do Does it Smith's work with a pad. PlayStation, though? Does it? Yeah, I, I don't know. they're quite good. Or Amazon, I would have thought Amazon more. They always have I, had, I had a look. I had a look. There are some, trying to find some that actually work with them. And they all yeah. go, well, you know, it's aftermarket, so you don't get the haptic and all yeah. that. I don't care. I don't yeah. really notice just that. want it to work. When I'm no, running along with my gun in the middle of space, trying to save <laughs> the universe from <laughs> reapers and shouting at people, I don't care about haptic. <laughs> Kiwi says, my controller is modular, but only because I keep throwing it against the wall. (laughs) 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 It's good to know that other people do the same things. Yes. You know, you know, (laughs) I love it it when Hugh gets uh, frustrated. (laughs) He starts talking Gaelic. Yeah, that's why I don't, that's why I don't speak Gaelic. My time trials. So but, but anyway, but, um, it's fantastic as long as uh, the his Fanatec is fantastic as long as PD stops stuffing up. Yeah, yeah. the force uh, feedback, yeah. isn't it? No, that's the it's thing. A bit, it's <laughs> a bit like um, when I was streaming this afternoon. Nay, bother came in and said, yes, "The normal, polite Simon when he plays GT Seven suddenly turns into the swearing lunatic." <laughs> <laughs> What did, did it used to be like a trope that when somebody got into a car, the mild mannered nice person turned into a lunatic? Yeah. Uh, I know that's it. Well, look, on that note, I'm going to have to finish the show because um, I have children Ooh. sleeping and getting ready for school, and a wife as well that's, that uh, is starting school is starting back tomorrow. So it needs to be um, 
uh, needs to go to sleep nice and early. So I will have to end the show. But thank you to everybody who has been watching and commenting tonight. It's been great to have you. And of course, for my two very special guests, Simon, it's fantastic to see you as always. Thank you for your videos and permissions to use them. And also, no problem. Thank you. To Roo, it's been great fun. And you're welcome anytime back. We're having lots of fun. So what we'll do is we are going to make sure that we put a lobby. We'll, we'll put it in my community post and we will do a lobby. And I think that would be quite fun because we can always say we can chat through Discord um, and you're all welcome to come along. But thanks to everyone who will be listening to this as well, um, especially if you're from China. All those hundred new listeners from China and all over the world from America and beyond. You're listening to The Hugh Hattrick Show with Rue, Simon and me. And Rue, I will ask you, as I always do, to finish with our great quote. So first I want to say tschüssi to uh, the German, German Kiwi, and uh, also <laughs> drive fast, but drive your bus faster on Comfort Softs. Fantastic. <laughs> See you soon, everyone. Have a wonderful week. Bye just now. <laughs>